get started. Um, welcome to this afternoon session. I'd like to start this talk by um, good, uh, by a simple greetings from our language. Kumusta? Uh, say it. Uh, say it with me. Kumusta? So uh, it means in my life, it means um, how are you? So at least uh, I'll tell you more about myself later, or where, where I'm from. So uh, I hope you're all having fun and you're, you're enjoying the work camp so far. And we appreciate you guys. Thank you for joining us at this event today. So before um, anything else, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is, my name is Drev. Uh, I am a senior web engineer at a fully, dis fully distributed company called Tenop. I'm all, I also help out uh, meetup. Uh, I also help out organize meetups in my hometown in Davao, as we also have like we're, we're, uh, growing WordPress community groups in there. And I'm also trying to support the uh, WordPress user groups in the Philippines. And also, I've been partly. Uh, involved with the global community team of the open source WordPress project. This afternoon, okay, ready? Are you ready? So this afternoon, I'd like to talk about a very important process in our workflow. That is, that is aside from sleeping. Also, right, sometimes you deploy code. So I like to talk a very important process in our workflow and should be for everyone when shipping and launching secured, clean, and performant WordPress powered sites. And this process is called, you guessed it, it's code review. You would probably start asking uh, now, what is a code review and why should you care about code review in the process? Let's simply look at it this way. Building a WordPress site may run smoothly on a few visits, but what if you have a site, or what if you are building a site for enterprise level of size, or site that gets thousands or millions of visits a day? Maybe sites like CNN, or New York Times, or TechCrunch, or even Vogue, you can name. So these type of sites don't afford, don't they, they, they cannot afford to go down even for a few seconds. So how are we making sure as their partner in delivering the best experience to their readers that you and other engineers or developers working on a project have written code that can scale and are ready for high traffic situations? That is what code review comes in and that is the end goal of why it is very important to have a code review process in place before you ship or deploy code. Mario Peshev, uh, CEO of uh, Debrex, it is also an agency that's similar to Tana uh, that builds and maintains large, uh, large and large scale WordPress platforms. Uh, he made a statement that what makes a $500 project different from a 20,000 one? Code quality. When I read it, I could not agree more to it. I could not agree more to his statement because uh, being a partner to, to your client, that would mean that we would have to go extra miles to make sure that their, that their, business, or that their business stays online and running which actually we need extra time and effort and resources as needed. There is no better way to make sure than to check each other's work. Okay, but still, why do you code review and what are you code reviewing on? So there are a couple of factors that you take into consideration when uh, or every time you send your code into your live site. You can't, although you can't avoid uh, there are certain cases when you overlook certain pieces of your code to go against these factors. And that's, perf and that's perfectly normal. Like, we are human too and we make mistakes, right? So code review is meant to be your backup and allows us to less likely, if not at all, cheap unwanted code. So let's start. 
First, for security. You code, re you code review because you would want to make sure your code is secure. It is very essential to keep the web safe since the web is free. Just like how it is, uh, just like how free it is to everyone, some people are also free to use web for their evil doings. We have some uh, preventive measures on your side. This title size would be the easy prey for the for these hackers and their nefarious activities. As a way to, for example, verify that each new code that you push to your site would would it cost or does it put your site at risk? You would want to check if data are sanitized, output are escaped, data gets validated correctly, nonces are in place, and you pay extra attention to areas where you could possibly do SQL injections. Oh wait, actually, I just gave you the whole summary of what to look for when you think about security. <laughs> okay, so let me back up and let's start with sanitizing and escaping your data. That's the first item there. So during your review, you would check if inputs, these are the data that you take in from the users, they should be sanitized. And outputs, these are all the data that you would display back to, your, to the browser or to your client browser. They should all escape. WordPress provides a number of APIs. Depends on the type of data that you are trying to sanitize or escape, such as sanitized text field for your regular text field needs, and sanitized email for email. While we have my very favorite one, Escape HTML, for escaping, uh, for generally removing extra special characters uh, from a string before you display it to the browser. And we have uh, Escape URL. In the escaping section, we have Escape URL that you can use to sort of escape whatever unnecessary characters that you want, that you would want, that you would expect to have in a URL string. During code review, uh, so during code review, I would also flag code that aren't validated. In cases where, for example, we need to call WP Mail, and we gotta make sure that the data that we need that we supply to the WP Mail call is actually indeed an email. So WordPress has this function is underscore underscore email that you can use to validate that. Use it, then done. The good old PHP, such as in the list below, the good old PHP has a number of validation functions too, such as ESET, MT, in array, or count. We are not in short supply of these validation helpers, so feel free to use them. As a rule of thumb, it is very much preferable to over-validate than to under-validate. Alright, so move on to the nuns. Okay, so I see a form or an action that would allow a user to process a certain piece of code that you are introducing. Well, I would go straight into looking what would be the necessary requirements to allow them to process the action. My friend, if, if you don't have a nuns in there, I would not let that code deploy because NAS would basically the security guard. In order, to, in order for something to pass through, then you have to have something that would allow you uh, to kind of like uh, process the request. So in the WordPress language, I'm not sure if you can see that clearly, but in the, that, in the WordPress language, you use WP NAS field or WP create NAS. So I'll go back here. So that's the WP nonce field and the WP create nonce. So these are the um, API that you can use that will generate a token. And then the other one is the WP verify nonce. That is uh, the API or uh, that, that, that is what you can use to verify the token that's generated from the two API above. So in my example here, I'm not sure if you can see this. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> so it's not readable enough, sorry guys, but um, 
So, so for example, the above example is an unsafe way of like processing uh, something which doesn't have like a checkpoint. And then here I've highlighted in red, there is a WP verify none. So meaning, if you don't get the token or the pass, then the whole thing here. Uh, okay. Oh, thank you. So the whole thing here uh, is gonna be skipped. So you don't allow this right here to be processed if it fails here. So I call this area here the security guard. So if you don't have the token, if you don't have the pass, then you have no right to pass to go or to enter, right? So, so yeah. So that would be an extra layer of security in your code. And lastly, we pay extra attention to, to uh, when things get into our database. So WPDB prepare uh, would be a very useful method when there's a need to run a custom database query. And yes, yeah, so I know you are trying to screenshot. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'll count one, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay, good. But, don't worry, so um, because we have a whole ton of info about security, data sanitization and escaping and validation and they are very much available in wordpress.org uh, Team Security Handbook It says uh, team there but this also applies to the, uh, plugin development So I'll give you the link uh, later as well as the slide, the copy of the slide Next Performance. You code review because you care about performance. So you code review because you would want to make sure your code is designed with performance in mind. Is your code optimized enough to endure and could scale when your site hits the busiest time of the day? If not, I would take a step back and flag out the affected code. I would start checking if you are using any uncached functions or requesting uncached queries, <coughs> keep an eye for these uh, for these several functions: get post, uh, term exists, get page by title, uh, and especially the last one, current user post. As I've experienced that firsthand, how it could really hurt your site. If you spot them in the code, these functions should not go uncached. So if you really need to use them, make sure you cache them in your code. So the next request, it will just pull the copy from the cache. All right, so I hope you can see this one. Um, how do you know, how do you know they are cached? Well, if you spec uh, the source code of the API, you can see that, for example, the get page by title, it's running a database query, the git underscore bar. Git underscore bar, bar is basically going to run a SQL command. So meaning that when, when, whenever you call get, get page by title, it's going to request directly to your database. And that is not scalable, my friend. So another thing to look is if you are running more queries than what you need for. In case of a new WP query instance, bypassing some queries, such as setting no found rows to true, uh, yeah, no found rows to true, that would skip the queries that basically uh, run to calculate the pagination. And setting the update post meta cache and update post term cache to false would basically skip priming the cache of the term and the meta of a certain post. Those things, although they look small, but they, they would, uh, would go a long way when it comes to, uh, to, to uh, thinking about the performance of your site. And yeah, I wouldn't let you get away with that request from a third party API without a cache in place. Certainly not under my watch. And lastly, so we're, we've gone through the security, performance, and lastly, because of readability. You code review because you would want to make sure 
the code is formatted in a way that engineers and developers would able to understand it. And engineers that will inherit a project uh, would be able to carry on without much friction. Making it developer friendly as we, well, pop fond of calling that, is making uh, your code readable. It's fairly simple, like uh, the use of, like flagging the use of space over tabs, or the use of, or not keeping your markup balance with PHP blocks. Okay, I know you feel me too when I say that who would want to work on with a, a, a code base like this? Okay, I can, I can work on, I, I can work with a code base like that, yeah? But that would, I would, but I would estimate my client with a crazy number of hours for me to read that. What if you have a code like this? Very much documented, right? So this is the good thing about the core is because this is an example from core as well. So, so that feeling when you have this kind of existing project and it's so easy to understand. Rather than this project, it will take me a day just, just to maybe understand a few lines of code. This one, okay, sorry, sorry this is very, really small, but uh, this one right here are comments of the API and then some arguments down below, but they are structured and formatted in a way that's very readable uh, from a developer's perspective. Thankfully, we have, uh, we have many generous people from the community who put together coding standards that we can all agree on. This is our own version of a uh, uh, pixel perfect code base. So imagine if we don't have coding standards in place in WordPress, it's likely that people would contribute more in core. So, how do you code review? I mean, what can you use and in what ways? So there's, there's two ways in how we can do code review. The first one, uh, automatic, as in 1T, and manual review. Among other tools, PHP Code Sniffer is very popular out there for automating this process. PHP Code Sniffer, so uh, anyone familiar with PHP Code Sniffer? Wait, wait, oh, cool. Okay, I love this crap. Uh, all right, so PHP Code Sniffer help detect violation of a defined set of coding standards and good news. There's even a collection of PHP Code Sniffer, uh, code sniffer standards for WordPress. So you can download and read the doc in its GitHub repo, and it's open source, as always. So yeah, I'll give you the link as well later. Not sure if you can see, but it's just WordPress coding standards. WordPress coding standards. If you search that, Google will uh, lead you the way. So when running PHP code sniffer with WordPress standard, okay, I'm gonna run this. This is a video. All right, so this is a, an example. So when running PHP code sniffer with a WordPress standards, it scans the code, catch common security issues like missing input sanitization, output escaping, uh, missing nonce checkpoints, um, etc. And actually, even validate that that everything's well documented. For example, you miss you use tabs or you miss a couple of tabs. So in the example right here, so there are issues like expected uh, one space before closing a bracket. So it's also, uh, so it found like some sort of formatting issues. And then I've highlighted here, okay, there's no, okay, there you go. So processing form, data, uh, processing form data without nonce verification. And there's the line, as you see to the left, far left of that, there's the line of the, uh, there's the, line of the code. So you can inspect and go and find a file and uh, do the necessary changes. OK, 
Okay, um, you can also leverage uh, continuous integrations or known as CI that could run PHP, uh, PHP code sniffer in the background or any custom script or however you architected it so long as it allows you to automate the process of code reviewing. WP Enforcer uses PHP code sniffer too, but it's more of like a plugin. Another way is manual review, but most of the time you would want an automatic plus manual combo code review setup because in that way that would be very very effective. So there are tools uh, that would allow you to conveniently re code review or review the code changes such as we have GitHub, uh, we have GitLab, Beanstalk, and Bitbug who are who have used this or have been using GitLab, GitHub, Bitbucket, what, what are other tools you're using in your workflow or in code reviewing if you guys have already used? Uh, GitLab, okay, perfect. We also use GitLab, okay. High five. Uh, okay, so, uh, all right, so, so on, Git, uh, on GitHub, for instance, it has this very beautiful UI and it allows you to comment on the line of code wherein you can provide feedback or even suggest a better way that's more in line with the wise of code review. For example, I spot a uh, user input and then you process that and then store that in a database but you, don't, you didn't have any standardization in place. Then. I would like point the, for example, I would point the line of code, then there would be like a pop-up on that that will allow you to drop comments. I'm not sure if you can see it here, no. Uh. Okay. Manual review is also known as uh, peer code reviewing, as it goes in two ways. When review code that others have written, Number two, when, uh, when you have your code reviewed by your team. And the best thing, you will learn a lot in the process. There is no better and fastest way to grow than to learn from your past mistakes. And you will learn and you will experience this like you will, uh, you will have tons of experience about this in the code review phase. And of course, you can definitely do self-review as well. And if you're using Git, I know a lot of speakers are talking about Git, and I hope uh, we are all in the room, you know, Git, which I think is the case. Um, that would make it even more easier for you to, to self-code review. So we have Source Tree. I use Source I have Source Tree too in my, my working machine, uh, as well as uh, GitHub for desktop. Or you can install a div purifier if you're using a uh, sublime text uh, editor. So even in our WordPress ecosystem, code review plays a very vital role in keeping a safe and healthy platform for everyone. Earlier this afternoon, uh, there was a great talk about making your team on WordPress.org standards. So Kat Flynn uh, did a better job there in explaining what process goes into reviewing a theme. So I hope you didn't miss that one, and if you did, uh, there will be a replay or a recording of that video in WordPress.tv. So as Tanak's philosophy goes, we should not take shortcuts that compromise the end, the end experience for the user. That being said, we have to make sure we review our code and they follow the and that we follow as an engineer of the site, we follow the WordPress coding standards and the engineering best practices that the community have helped curate over the years. So here, the TANAP has an engineering best practices, and we all we always check the code against these practices and make sure that uh, the new changes follows whatever whatever is in here, along with the WordPress coding standards. We are well on our way to dominate the web. Actually, we are 33% of what you see in the internet. Let's, hit, uh, let's help build web to be a better place through making, through making sure we ship 
uh, well-engineered code. And one step of doing that is to make code review part of your engineer's DNA or developer DNA. Or better yet, make it part of your team culture. Thank you very much.